Well, good morning and welcome to uh, Yoga from the Desert. Um, I am super happy to be doing this out here and it just feels kind of crazy and surreal. Um, I've spent the morning looking for good spots here and I'm uh, starting to really see how finding a flat spot in the shade in the uh, Utah desert is quite a privilege in and of itself. <laughs> so I'll be making do with this spot as best as I can. But um, I'm in one of my favorite places in the world and um, it's so beautiful out here. Anyone who know, who's been out to this part of Utah near Moab knows exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and you know, when you're traveling a lot by yourself, when you're spending a lot of time alone, when you're in big expansive places in nature, you just naturally start reflecting on your life, on where you're going, on the state of things right now. Um, and that process just happens very naturally. And I've been finding over the last two days of driving, one thing that I've been reflecting on a lot that I want to uh, go into into our practice today is becoming more aware of and removing our ego from what we do. And this is something I'm always working on because you know, the middle child in me wants a certain kind of attention. And, you know, in everything that I do, I feel this balance between, you know, what my heart and soul are moving towards and what my ego is trying to gratify. And sometimes that line can get a little hairy, especially when you're really passionate about doing something and something that's going to fulfill big goals for you. So as I've been driving, I've been listening to um, Finding Ultra by Rich Roll, who's a big inspiration to me. And you know, he basically made the transition from being an unhealthy middle-aged alcoholic to a world-renowned um, ultra endurance athlete. And his list of accomplishments is unbelievable. And you know, when I was driving into Utah this morning, he was talking about amidst his epic five challenge on the fourth day of doing five Ironman triathlons in a row. <laughs> he was talking about how devastated his body, his mind, his spirit was. And the only thing that was going to allow him to keep going was the knowing that he's doing this for something larger than himself, that people are look were looking to him and his racing partner to finish what they set out to do or, um, or stop or get stopped in their efforts. And he was talking about this removal of the ego from what we're doing. And I've touched on this a little bit in the last few weeks where when we were talking about countering our doubting minds with persistence and being persistent in our work and re detaching this layer of ego from what it is we're trying to do. Um, so as we meditate today and as we think about um, what sort of shifts we're bringing about in our lives during shutdown time and what things we want to accomplish. Um, I'd love to encourage some introspection and um, see how we can go from a place of finding this ego in what we're working on and step more fully into a place of wholehearted service. And that's something that I'm working really hard on and uh, would love to share my process with with you. So that being said, we'll start our practice. Um, you know, we are, I am outside here, so please bear with me with any wind sounds or bugs or things that may pop up during the practice. Um, yeah, so we'll go ahead and start by finding our seat for meditation. Finding our breath. Feeling that transition from shorter, shallower breath into deeper, 
more spacious, expansive breath. So feel this breath centering you. Feel this breath revitalizing you. Feel this breath bringing in the light of awareness. So as always in our practice, we seek to become more and more self-aware. To unravel the subconscious patterns of our minds that create suffering for ourselves and others. We invite awareness in to burn those patterns away and clear the path for creating new ones that allow us to feel more free and that allow us to better serve each other. So we'll invite that in through our breath at the beginning of our practice today. We'll sit up just a little bit taller through the spine. Feel the crown reaching. Feel the back of the neck open a little bit. Envisioning more space between the vertebrae. Imagining more flow of energy through the spinal column. Taking a few more breaths here. Relax in the hips just a little bit. So before we transition into some movement, we'll again reset our intention on the opening aware of awareness today. Looking for insight into how ego may play a role into our work, into the things that we do, the things that we really care about. So next breath in. You can exhale and open the eyes. We'll bring the hands together in prayer here. Interlace the fingers, reaching arms overhead. Take an easy seated back bend here. And exhale to bring the hands back to prayer. Next breath in, bring the hands overhead again. This time we'll hold the breath at the top, reach the arms out, and exhale, bringing them back in. Inhale to reach overhead, find an easy seated back bend again. Exhale, hands back to prayer. Inhale for one more reach overhead. Hold the breath in as you reach the arms out wide. Open up space in the chest. And exhale the hands down to the knees. Let's go ahead and start warming up the hips here. So we'll make some circles. Gradually widening. Gently.
changing direction whenever you'd like. Slowing them down a little bit. Coming back to center, arms can reach up tall. Big breath comes in. We'll spend a little bit of time in a forward fold, resting our head to the ground. Letting the shoulders relax. Letting the hip creases relax. So we'll feel a certain humility coming in while we're in this pose. Putting ourselves in a place of humility before we do our self work today. We'll extend to reach over the right leg. Extending through the left arm. Getting a nice side body opening here. Walking hands back to center. Over to the left side. Extending torso over the left leg. Reach through the right side. I got this nice rock here to stretch on. And then we'll come back to center. We'll walk the hands out one more time. Big breath comes in. And we'll exhale. Resting on the floor. You can inhale to bring yourself on up. We'll go ahead and uncross the legs here. We'll start to get the hips warmed up a little bit further. First, finding our staff pose, moving the flesh, the glutes, sit bones grounding, legs flexing a little bit, toes reaching towards you ever so slightly. And then if you find your pelvis tilting back, see if you can bring it level. You'll feel your hip flexors working to do this. Bring the upper body upright, shoulders back and down, hands can rest on the thighs. Find a steady gaze forward. Next breath in can take the hands overhead. Rotate them back behind you. We'll start to get our shoulders warmed up here. So we'll retract the shoulders. We'll push down into the floor and float our seat. Not quite an inclined plane, just getting the shoulders warm here. And the seat comes down. We can let this turn into an easy seated back bend. Getting some more bird sounds behind me here. Arms come overhead. Inhale, reach tall. Lengthen through the spine as you fold forward. Shoulders back, crown reaching. One more deep breath into the legs. And we'll return to staff pose. We'll bring the arms overhead. Rotate back, hands plant, fingers pointing away. We'll engage in the shoulders, retract and depress. And we'll lift the hips up, finding our full incline plane this time. 
crown extending, take, take a couple good breaths here. And exhale to lower when you're ready. Arms can come overhead. And we'll exhale to fold forward. This time we'll round the spine. Hands can take the shins or the ankles or the feet. Wherever your current level of body openness is, settle in there. And we'll find our forward fold. Again, welcoming in a spirit of humility, reminding ourselves that our yoga practice is not just for us. Our yoga practice makes us a better tool for service, it makes us more open to others, it makes us more helpful. So next breath comes in, you can come upright again. This time we'll spend a little bit of time in reverse table. So instead of incline plane, we'll set up for a reverse table so you can bend in the knees. We'll plant the hands behind us again and we'll bring the hips up towards the ceiling. In my case, the blue sky here. Shoulders squeeze back, chest opens. Head comes back, but the neck is not crunching. One more breath. And we'll come down here. Next, we'll give the abs and the hips a little bit of work in our boat pose. So today, after a couple rounds, I'd like to have us try full boat. So to begin, we'll find our balance on the bones of our seat. Toes pointing forward. Calves parallel to the floor. Extend the arms, extend through the spine, shoulders back, crown reaches. Feel the work that the hips are doing here. We'll go ahead and bring the feet to the floor. We'll integrate a twisting motion here. So we'll bring the hands together. We'll twist over to our right side, staying long through the spine, making sure we're not bending in the low back, tilting the pelvis back. Back through center. Over to the left, long through the spine. And back to center. Let's come down to the floor. Balance this out with a bridge pose. Heels close to the seat. Hands planting underneath you. And when you're ready, press the hips up. Press shoulders underneath you. Exhale to lower, peeling the spine back onto the floor. And arrive and rest there for a moment. And we'll extend the legs out in front of us, just above the floor, lifting the head and the shoulders up off the floor. And we'll come back to our boat pose. We'll take another round here. Again, paying attention to the tilt of the pelvis. Most of our sacrum here is gonna be off the floor. And by that, I mean, we're not gonna be leaning back onto the sacrum, but balancing more onto the bones of the seat. Another breath or two here.
and then we'll exhale to bring the feet down. We'll bring the hands together. We'll take a twist or two here. So I'm still reaching up tall through the spine, shoulders back, a twist to the left. Back to center, tall spine, twist right. center. We'll let ourselves come down back onto the ground for another round of bridge pose. So go ahead and set the body up. When you're ready, lifting the hips up towards the ceiling, pressing the shoulders back and down. Another big breath here. Exhale to peel the spine back onto the floor, resting here for just a moment, letting tension leave the body. And then we'll extend the legs out in front of us, hovering above the floor, same with head and shoulders. This time we'll go for full boat, boat pose if you're ready, extending the legs, working in the hip flexors. and bringing the feet back down to the floor. We'll finish out with a couple twists here. Coming to right side, tall through the spine. Back to center, left side. Reaching and twisting. to center lay the body down one more round of bridge pose here setting up with the feet close to your seat as you can and when you're ready lifting hips skyward One more big breath in. And we'll exhale to peel the spine back onto the floor. From here you can bring the legs into the chest. We're gonna start rocking back and forth a bit. We're gonna aim to rock all the way up to a squat. This will be an interesting challenge in the terrain I'm on. <laughs> Not quite. And there we go. So once you find your way up to a squat, adjust, get your feet situated. We'll spend a little bit of time here before we get onto the hands and knees, give the upper body some more weight bearing. So always good to breathe into the hips and give them this opening position is also very helpful for your whole di digestive tract, encourages healthy elimination, detoxifying, all that good stuff. <laughs> so we'll come up a little taller through the spine, crown reaching, elbows pressing. And we'll release, hands to the floor. We'll go ahead and find our tabletop pose here and we'll do a little bit of work on the hands and knees, starting with some fluid cat-cow movement. Just to get the spine calibrated for the day. Mine's feeling a little stiff from two 13-hour days on the road. So I'm happy to be out here breathing fresh air and moving. So 
Next time you come to your cat pose, go ahead and hold it. Bring some extra width between the shoulder blades. And reverse it down to cow. And spine comes neutral again. You can just let yourself naturally move around a little bit and find neutral again. So now we'll go ahead and step our feet back into our downward facing. And we'll bring a little bit of a longer hold here. So first find the position, find a nice grip of the toes, a nice spreading of the fingers. Allow the heels to relax downward. See if you can get just a little bit straighter in the arms. See if you can widen your armpits just a little bit more. Nice, and we'll come down onto the hands and knees and relax into child's pose. There are times in our physical practice where we can maybe get a little bit hung up on the benefits that we want, the type of body that we want from our postures. So this is an example of how ego can creep into our work. So while we're relaxing here in child's pose, we can remind ourselves that we're not here working for the ego's purposes. We're here working to uncover more of our higher nature. So we'll come up on hands and knees. We'll step the feet back. And this time we'll come to a plank pose here. Engaging in the shoulders, feeling strong support of our body as the knees drop. We'll sweep chin and chest, find upward facing, hold for a breath or two, shoulders nice and engaged here, chest is open, crown extending up, neck not crunching. And we'll press it back to a downward facing. We'll reach right leg back and give ourselves a little side body opening by stacking right hip over left. And we'll bring the foot back down. We'll come back to plank pose. We'll shift our weight onto our right arm. We'll rotate onto the outer edge of the right foot, balancing in our side plank, left hand reaches skyward. And we'll bring it back down. Knees drop, chin and chest sweep, upward facing. Engage and breathe. And push it back, downward facing. Another breath to widen in the armpits. Reach left leg back this time. Stack left hip over right, side body opening. And we'll bring the leg back 
down. Raising this juniper tree over here. <laughs> we'll bring ourselves back to our plank pose. We'll rotate onto the left wrist here. Left side, side plank. And bring it down. Knees come down. Chin and chest sweep. One more upward facing. Three breaths, strong hold. And press back. Downward facing. Find weight bearing, find support. Find minimal effort in the pose here. And we'll exhale to bring the knees down. We'll sit back and rest in our child's pose. We'll return to our breath. We'll return to relaxation in the body. We'll return to this feeling of yoga expanding our awareness to shine more light on the elusive ego so that we have the choice of what place we want to act from. So when you're ready, you can come up out of the pose and sit back onto the heels. Giving the ankles a little stretch out here. Rocking from side to side a bit. And you can release the legs from underneath you. And um, instead of finishing on the floor today in Shavasana, we'll finish with another short meditation. So you can take whatever position you'd like to, to do that seated, lying down, whatever suits you best. So once you arrive there, go ahead and close your eyes. So in this moment, I'm finding myself feeling a immense gratitude for the tools that we have tools that yoga gives us to be able to watch ourselves intently to be able to see how ego slips in so as we breathe and meditate in this closing portion of our practice we can bring in the intention to place ourselves more in the attitude of service. Where we can confidently take our skills, our talents, our gifts, and we can have the open awareness to see where we can apply those best, how to help other people. know that our self-work feeds directly into our ability to do that well. Hence, when we practice, we're not just practicing for ourselves, we're practicing for everyone. So we'll take a few moments to breathe into that intention.
sitting up a little taller, breathing a little deeper. And we'll prepare to conclude our work today with an ohm together. So we'll exhale the breath you have, take in a new breath. Om. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. service to each other in our own higher nature and say namaste. Hmm.